you know, you have to produce more and more insulin to keep shoving more in. So that's the sort of overflow hypothesis of insulin resistance, which is really looking at it as a disease of too much glucose, too much insulin, or the disease is hyperinsulinemia, which makes a lot more sense. And it, it in fact explains everything about type 2 diabetes, because that's why you have obesity associated. That's why you have uh, fatty liver. That's why when you lose weight, you are going to reverse the type 2 diabetes. Now, if you look at these diseases, obesity, type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's, as diseases of hyperinsulinemia, that sets you up immediately to ask the right question. If my insulin is too high, how am I going to lower insulin? Because that is the root cause, and that is how I am going to be successful. And one of the ways would be to reduce carbohydrates, because carbohydrates are glucose. And carbohydrates stimulate insulin, where proteins and fats do not, for example. And in fact, now you have the studies these days looking at uh, you know, low-carbohydrate diets. There's more and more studies in the treatment of type 2 diabetes. Some have been extremely successful. I mean, even the American Diabetes Association says low-carbohydrate diets have the most scientific evidence behind them for reversal of type 2 diabetes. And then the other way to lower uh, insulin, if the disease is too much insulin, how do you lower insulin? And the other is intermittent fasting, which is sort of a natural solution. If you don't eat, your body will simply burn off the excess glucose, and therefore you're going to be able to reverse your type 2 diabetes. Just this month, actually, two randomized control trials looking at intermittent fasting and type 2 diabetes were both extremely positive, almost 50% remission rate of type 2 diabetes. If you think about the millions of Americans who have type 2 diabetes, a 50% remission rate is absolutely stunning. Like this is a treatment which is free, which is available to anybody, which has been used for thousands and thousands of years. It started with the Dietary Guidelines for Americans in 1977, I think, where Yudkin and others were sort of like, hey, it's the sugar, whereas uh, Ansel Keys and so on were, hey, it's the fat. So in science, there's always a back and forth, but you know, it, 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 when you have official pronouncements like the Dietary Guidelines in 1977, they basically just said, nope, fat is the enemy, and everything had to change to conform to that view, right? And everything else, if it was, if you're sort of like Atkins and saying, oh, it's probably the starches and the sugars, um, you know, that didn't fit the narrative, so you got sort of marginalized, which is unfortunate because that really stifles scientific debate where legitimate points of view could be brought uh, to mind. <music>